We are operating on a frequency of 52 megacycles by authority of the Federal Communications Commission. A test program follows. statement at least that these technical problems are not insurmountable. And here we go. Don't forget to meet. Pew pew. Bye. I'm Christophe. I'm French. I've been living in, in Austria at some point. It's where I met Tim I'm playing for. No conga fan in Austria. It's a play of word with no kangaroo in Austria, so we find it silly and funny to, to change it to no cogafant in Austria. I'm playing Flores, a deck of Alessandro, one of our teammates. It's a very good deck, in, uh, it's very solid, let's say. He has some anti some rush, some damage, some, a bit of everything, so I find it, as a, it was a safe choice as a, as a first deck. And I'm playing a monster till deck. So I will need uh, some uh, luck on my tempo. I'm not sure uh, I have more than like 30% chance to, to win that. Eight games and uh, I won two only. <laughs> no, I'm not confident. Like, uh, so we test all three matches and our first match, it was like 50-50. Our second match, it was maybe we were favorite like 70 to 30. And this one, uh, it's like opposite. Like uh, I'm not, I'm not favorite. I will need some luck to uh, to resist the shadow steel. I was hoping, I was like, I was thinking we will face a lot of quota in this tournament. I was very surprised to see it was full of uh, mass mutation and world collide. But then when we check the old guard deck list, it was all the deck. So we were kind of happy. We took the decision we took. So in this, we were lucky. Like um, they are very good decks, but we were lucky to have the decks we pick against them. Bye-bye. I'm Nathan. I make SAS and Decks of Keyford, member of Team SAS of the Luxurious Playstyle. Actually, all of the members of our team are members of Team SAS of the Luxurious Playstyle. We just invited Alex pretty recently, so, so that's cool. Fun getting new people. We're also sort of increasing the team's international presence a little bit, which is cool. I'm sort of excited to see how this game ends up going. It's interesting looking at the decks. Like my deck is full of steel, you know, routine jobs, a key part. I might worry about eyes. Cool. I actually have played a ton with a double eye deck. And so I am somewhat familiar with how that goes. Hopefully that goes well for me. But if he's able to archive those up, not finished with you, them, and to a good position, that could be pretty rough. I also see he has Double Hawk, which is interesting. He has five artifacts himself, some of which are relatively optional. So it'd be an interesting decision if I need to discard my artifacts to keep the Hawk Amber from being too bad. It doesn't look like it's too bad of a Data Forge deck. Oh, he has a Discombobulator, so still some Steel turn off. Oh, man. That Discombobulator, though, if he gets Discombobulator on Automaton and I can't take that out, that's going to be a nightmare. I hadn't practiced this matchup. I've been busy with other things. I don't know, taking some Yard Debris to um, you know, the Yard Debris place yesterday. All that kind of stuff. But I've played Donovan quite a bit, so I'm really familiar with that deck. See how it goes, but please draw both eyes in your opening hand and just never even draw the Automaton. Discombobulate. Never draw that one. That'll be great for me. I think it'll be a, a fun game. I'm interested to see how it goes. Cool. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone. Uh, it's Ken Touch, this Keyforge team from Poland. Um, my name is Dominic, uh, and with me I have Robert. Hello, Robert. Right. So uh, today we will be doing some uh, deck deconstruction for Kota 7 uh, for the second round. And uh, this this time the decks are really, really nice. Uh, we don't have any mm, uh, underdogs in this matchups, I believe. Uh, so uh, let's dive in into the, the construction. So the first matchup for today is Donovan of 
Jes Jesert Red Hunt versus Flores Messaggero della Brillantezza. So uh, yeah, I have to turn on my <laughs> uh, my Italian uh, accent. <laughs> it will be you know <laughs> totally totally uh, lame, uh, I think. Uh, okay, so Rabik, what do you think about about this deck? So do you think about this matchup? So basically, I see the the Donovan, uh, which is basically the team SAS. Uh, uh, Deck, and if you hear the team, hear, hear the team SAS, you think about great decks, and this is the one of those uh, great code the Archons deck with uh, the premium houses of this Logos Shadows, and in every house has the things you are looking for, right? So you have Logos with library access, face shift, warehome, so you can just create an absurdly amount of like card draw in one turn. And you have a great disruption in this with control the weeks, with shuffles, with sure toxins and stuff. And the shadows that do that does what shadows should do, which is steal a bunch with four routine drop. I feel like it's really good deck because it's it's really elastic. You have everything you need: artifact control, ember control, uh, ember burst, and uh, and the board control. So it sh it shall be really good. In the tournament environment, and yep. uh, how do you see the other deck, Dominic? Yeah, so on the one side we have a, a pretty flexible deck with most uh, uh, with answers to, to to most threats, and on the second side of the table we see the Flores, um, and actually I think that this deck is also. Mm, maybe not so powerful as Donovan, but it's also really good. Um, we have Key Forgery, and it's one of my favorite artifacts from uh, uh, from the World's Collide set. Uh, we have Gambling then, uh, and uh, it could be sometimes uh, worth to gamble for, for example, a key. <laughs> if you have four amber, the the gambling then uh, actually happens before the the force the key step. So uh, it's really important to mm, uh, to remember that uh, you could forge a key, for example. Mm, uh, we have C, uh, we have uh, two eye of the fringes here, and uh, it's a premium uh, card. But unfortunately, we see. Um, almost none of archiving cards. We have, uh, I believe, two archiving cards, uh, like work wormhole technician, and uh, yeah, there is something else. Or I and yeah, uh, and and uh, and Eddie. Yes, of course. So uh, it will be hard to you know uh, create a really powerful. Uh, steering turn with double E on the fringes. Uh, so th th the value of, of this this is really determined uh, by, by these two cards. But playing against Donovan, here we see a lot of uh, purges. We could purge with this I on the fringes, we could purge our opponents this, control the weaks, uh, toxins, uh, dust teams, uh, Poltergeists. Uh, it's all we we don't want to to see again, um, and s we are stealing, you know, um, just you know as a side effect of of those purges. Also, we have no name to purge routine jobs. Um, but w what's your opinion about this matchup? Which deck should win? So I believe on paper I would give more like edge to Donovan, but it's the the classical way way of, of seeing the matchup. So we have world, uh, words collide with great combos with double E on the fringes with uh, Ronnie wrist locks and hit and run. You can do great things, but the cards needs to align as well as uh, uh, you need to hit them at the proper time. And on Donovan. Will play most of, of his hands. Uh, there's there's like really great efficiency of the deck, and uh, I feel like 
most of like in most games Donovan shall win, but there are uh, games when you hit the no name on the routine jobs, when you hit the E on the fringes on the key cards, and mm -hmm. and uh, when you actually are able to destroy the artifacts like Screaming Cave, which is really really important in Donovan. So uh, I feel like Donovan shall be winning, but it's it's not like a huge huge underdog in Florida. Yeah. So um, I think about 70-30. So Donovan will win about 70% of of the matchups. Uh, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I feel like it's, it's around that. Probably we can go a little bit less uh, because, uh, because there are many lines with Flores, but mm -hmm. it's not consistent. It's definitely... Uh, Donovan favorite, and we can just agree on the seventy thirty for this. Yep. One. Yeah. So uh, seventy thirty. It's uh, it's actually quite opposite what we say before. That it's a pretty you know um, pretty uh, balanced matchup, but uh, unfortunately Donovan, I, I believe, should win. Uh, about 20% more games than, than, than Flores. Okay, so uh, that was the first matchup. Right, Brett's now. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that might help you. Uh, so, so right, so let's look at this opening hands. I'm going to check it on pause. And... So, Christoph with a hell of a start in hand. The game has quickly got underway. Yeah, we saw an archivist come down first, followed by a daughter and a Edai archiving an E on the fringes. With second E being drawn, Corridon set up a nice archiving turn. Sets up the future. Sets up the future for some principle. World Whipples into Toxin, which is a beautiful little bit of disruption. Mother gonna draw more cards. Uh, it's gonna be a nice way to get rid of the creatures on Christoph's board with the th with the twin bolt emissions. But Christoph does not really care about that four amber because the double EE -E is just going to wreck face here. <coughs> Gleeful may have to gonna take care of Mother and the Toxin. E comes down, second E comes down. <laughs> Corridan is really worried about what's going on here. Couple of discards, gonna take away the amber there and a not finish with you. We'll get to the daughter and the Edai back in the deck. And that's gonna get Christoph pretty much on to check here. That's turn one, right? That is, that is turn well turn two, because his first turn was Edai. Oh, yeah, sorry, turn. sorry, yeah, turn two. But we see the double routine job in hand, which is going to be a free amber swing. The pawn yeah. sacrifice is going to get rid of both the E's. And then we're going to see Ghost Hand, which is going to make a big swing for Corridan now being on check. And wow. Christoph being on free. That's a hell <coughs> Huge of a amber back. swings here. Hagaman that comes down to stop the forge. To stop the forge. Routine job goes down. Ooh. No, gambling then. Sorry, gambling, gambling, then Sorry. Is, gambling then is a risky one here, but I. I wouldn't really take it, especially if you know what, you, what you've got. Plays Dustin. Are we going to pop the gateway to disc? Doesn't pop the gateway to disc. It's just going to set up a nice control board. Would you have done gateway to disc first, or would you not want <coughs> because of the chain risk? No, just for a mugger. I might have held it for a couple of turns, but that's on me. Kristoff mm. going into disc. Plays Binding Irons, wants to slow Kari down. Drops the Malison, drops the Scullion, sacrificing the Malison. Not wanting to give the amber back for Hugger Mugger and give away that key. There we see the second E die. We see a Hawk. We see Key Forgery and Ronnie Risk Clocks, which is going to be huge. Discards the Skeleton Key. Kari did say during the interview that he would be happy to just keep discarding his artifacts just to make sure those Hawks don't get value from him. Up to 12. Ronnie's going to do some work here. Hox's own gambling den, the key forgery could be huge here. Is it not quite able to get unchecked themselves? We have got a hit and run with Wild Wormhole though. Control the wing back into shadows. 
Flame Reef re destroys Ronnie and then steals with the Pit Demon, takes Cut of Crystal even lower, and <clears throat> is ready. Called it right with the first gambling then. Passes straight back over to Kari. Nothing he can do apart from discard the hit and run. I, I love Crystal's comment. Raw talent about the gambling then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't help that it's key forgery and with five logos cards in hand, Kari just has to keep calling logos and he has got an 87.6 chance of getting it right. Yeah, that is true. Neutron Shark's going to get rid of that uh, factor. Neutron Shark gets rid of the uh, poor guess. This guy's effort in principle too far ahead. And Kristoff's in a lot of trouble here. Strange Gizmo's come a bit too late. Reassembling Automaton's come very late. I'm still no sign of this discombobulator. Corey said at the, at the beginning of the interview that he hoped the discombobulator and reassembling Automaton didn't show up. And that's been the case. Wow. There's the discombobulator. Speed, the speed of this game. Yeah, both. Uh, this is how they edited down as well. Both players know the deck really well, know what they can do. This toxin is not going anywhere. There is a Brend. If if there was another Shadow creature down, this Brend with no with no safety numbers could be huge. But unfortunately, Kristoff not able to keep get the amber get the uh, not able to get it, the key cost high enough. <coughs> And yeah, there we go. That's plays hologram from, and that's game. Beautifully done. The speed Quick. that went through. Donovan has hell of power behind Very it. Very good game. Donovan and we're now going to go to interviews. Deck I've played it a bunch, and it is maybe above all decks I've ever played. The deck that people don't forge against, like it actually like will lose games. Like to if your discombobulator automaton had come down early and stuck, like that just would have been rough like the whole game but often it's like you're just not gonna have amber the whole game. and creatures they're they're not gonna happen either. Okay. i needed my combo anti-steel mm -hmm. like a mid mid game oh, yeah. my my two uh okay. late game to counter your uh, <laughs> routine job but uh, it was opposite so when i was talking in brett early game i was like well i'm hoping this automaton and discombobulator come not together or late and i come very early and all my wishes came true <laughs> so, so yeah, that was just a rough draw. It's fine, it's fine. We were, uh, we, have, we were lucky here in Osaka. Okay. One of my best decks is a double eye deck, so I'm really familiar with the, the misery of the early eyes. And uh, it was not a bad, like, purging your disc would have been good against your Screaming Cave or oh, yeah. your Hunter guy, so... so well, was, that, uh, screaming, that Screaming Cave actually is hot garbage. I think yeah, I've used it once, because <laughs> it destroys your routine jobs, so it's like, you only ever use it if you've already used all three, all four rather routine jobs. Or um, maybe so if, if, you have, if you have it turn one and then your routine job are a bit late. Yeah, I've I've had a game once I think where I used it, but it's uh, very much uh, bad. Yeah, your deck is like a ninety percent your shadow. Yeah, it's well, well the discs and especially and the logos are sort of stealthy good. Like they have really good tools, like the the shark and the poltergeist, like. Let yeah, you yeah. Um, deal with a lot of different problem decks and like having a gateway to this. And, you know, it's got the library access actually goes off pretty well a lot of the time. You, you have some big creatures. So it was it was a problem for my board. Like uh, even if mm -hmm. I had the disencobulator without without uh, the automaton, I will, uh, you will have clean it easy. And even with the automaton, it was not auto, auto stick like uh, you can you can fight as well with this deck. Yeah, I was planning like I I archived like um the pawn sacrifice with the expectation like maybe this will help me take out automaton. But you know, mm -hmm. then there were double eyes and it's like well, I'm not gonna leave that around for more free stealing. It's actually a a really consistent deck, but there are definitely some combos that can, you know, turn it off. Thank so. you, Breton. Thank you for doing it. Have a good night, guys. Nathan. See bye -bye. you guys later. Bye.